The race is on. As we speak, the race for the 6th generation fighter is in full swing. There are 5 major contenders. There are the Americans with the two MGATS projects. One is developed by the Air Force and the other one by the Navy. Despite sharing the same name, these are two rather different initiatives. Then there is the British, Italian and Swedish Tempest, the French, German and Spanish FCAS, and then there's Godzilla. The 29th of July 1997, the so-called Obey Amendment enshrined in, in the US law the ban of the export of the F-25. The aircraft was still in development, but it was already decided that those technologies had not to be exported. And this had an immediate effect on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. In 1997, Japan's F-15Js were in their full maturity. The Mitsubishi F-2 had yet to be introduced in service, but the Japanese government was already thinking to a replacement for its fleet of top fighters. And the idea was, in the wake of the F-15 acquisition, to keep going with the best that the American technology could provide. The F-22 export ban changed these plans. At the same time, the F-2 program was happening, and while the aircraft was definitely a success, the cooperation with the United States was less so. For more than a decade, no commitment was announced till 2009. In 2009, the first of a series of studies to define and research the key aerospace technologies for the next decades were started. And the list was impressive. The top priority was given to detecting stealth aircraft and the Japanese approach was using various sensors all networked together. Supersonic store separation, something that seems simple but it is not, was also on the list. Then there was something that the Japanese call integrated fire control technology, which is basically their version of network-centric warfare. Direct energy weapons were explored too with high power microwave technology to basically fry incoming missiles. Furthermore, less glamorous technologies like advanced electronic warfare, enhanced infrared imaging or helmet mounted displays were all investigated. Very cleverly, the Japanese did not focus on the systems only, but also studied the platform, because they know very well that the platform is also part of the overall effectiveness of the aircraft. They started with digital engineering and simulation, which are essential parts of every modern project. They also made the consideration that to have an effective and optimized stealth, probably the internal spaces of the aircraft were going to be constrained because of the limitations that stealth places on the aircraft shape and structure. So they studied how to reduce the size of the internals. They focus on electric actuators, which are a key element to reduce the size and increase the flexibility of the actuators. And they also focused on advanced composite materials to reduce weight because weight is the enemy of every aircraft performance. And finally, since developing the engine is a project that is as complex as the rest of the aircraft altogether, they focused on developing the engine early and they took a very, very peculiar approach. But more on this later. All this work culminated in a technology demonstrator, the X-2 Shinshin, that flew from 2016 to 2018. The aircraft demonstrated that the Japanese aerospace industry had the capability of developing a sixth generation fighter, skipping the fifth generation. And then they were ready to throw everything away. Between 2016 and 2019, the Japanese government explored the possibility of having the aircraft built abroad. They contacted Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Biosystems. And all these companies presented preliminary studies based on existing aircraft and existing technologies. None of those designs, though, met the Japanese requirement. The 1st of April 2020, the FX program was officially started with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries as the main contractor and Hihi Industries in charge of the engine. 
Do they have the April's Fool in Japan? The only relevant international cooperation at this stage seems with the United Kingdom. Rolls-Royce seems to be involved in improving the engine and by systems is going to be involved for some specific systems of the aircraft. So it is pretty noticeable the exclusion of the United States from the program. In fact, in the last few decades, the defense cooperation with the United States has come to be seen in Japan as a necessary evil rather than a sound choice. For the Japanese, in fact, the lack of technology transfer has always been seen as a source of concern. In the attempt of disrupting the cooperation with the UK, the United States even offered to open up part of the F-35 source code, but the memory of the bitter legacy of the F-2 program actually prevailed. Moreover, American technology comes with strings attached that may severely limit the export potential of the aircraft. So the program has started and the plan is relatively conservative considering the amount of work that has been already done. The first flight is expected in 2028, the serial production in 2031 and the first operational squadrons in 2035. I personally can only applaud the Japanese for having chosen a largely national solution. This will greatly benefit their industry, their economics and will give them some latitude in foreign policy. Moreover, in the context of a Western coalition, as I always say, variety adds resilience. When the project was announced, the famous Aviation Week review nicknamed the aircraft Godzilla. I'm pretty sure the Japanese will choose their own name for the aircraft, but if they would keep Godzilla, that would be incredibly cool. Among the six generation fighter projects, the Japanese FX is probably the project that we know the most. We know that it's going to be a twin engine heavy fighter, albeit we don't know if it's going to be a single seater, a dual seater, or more probably both. We only have one artist's impression that basically depicts a single seater, but it's definitely too early to be really sure of the final configuration. We know that the aircraft is going to make an extensive use of advanced composites and the Japanese expect to save just for this about 11% of the aircraft weight. Stealth is going to be implemented with the usual laundry list of configuration features. The radar absorbing materials are going to be of original Japanese design and they're going to be carbon fiber based materials integral in the aircraft structure. A particular consideration has been given in shielding the return of antennas. In fact, antennas cannot be shielded under radar absorbing materials or metal for what matters, because otherwise they won't work. So far, the most common solution is mounting the antennas at an angle to avoid direct radar reflections toward the source. The Japanese are developing active materials that can behave like a sheet of metal or be transparent to electromagnetic radiation depending on a control signal. This is not an original idea, but it is probably one of the first times when it is actively researched and pursued. There are also unconfirmed news that for the main radar antenna they are reviving the Russian concept of the plasma screen. This is not science fiction, it has been developed in Russia, it has been confirmed to be working, but it never became mainstream because it requires a lot of energy. We know that the radar is going to be an AISA radar, obviously, and the benchmark that the Japanese have chosen for themselves is the APG-81 of the F-35. And by the way, considering the attention that the Japanese have given to the problem of detecting stealth, we may expect some surprises from this unit when it will be operational. We know that there will be an advanced electronic warfare suite and some of its components actually have already flown on a modified F-2 and the result has been described as positive, at least by the press. The antennas will be integrated in the aircraft surface, but they don't seem to be smart skins. 
and to keep all these electronics refrigerated a new and efficient vapor cycle refrigeration system has been developed the armament is still uncertain but the specification calls for internal bays significantly larger than those of the f-35 capable of housing at least six medium large items whatever this may mean the aircraft is also expected to be equipped with defensive microwave weapons to basically fry the electronics of the incoming missiles like all modern aircraft the fx is planned to be a drone controller the japanese are planning two different type of drones one with sensors to operate as a scout and one with weapons to operate as a weapons truck for the main aircraft this part of the project though is probably the less advanced because we have no news of any experiment or tests or design or anything however at least at this point the most interesting element of the package is the engine the japanese started with the observation that the stealth shape is not ideal to accommodate the internal components of the aircraft they also considered that a flattened aircraft shape is inherently more stealth than a more bulkier shape because the ratio between the lateral surface and the volume is lower this means that fitting all the parts inside the aircraft may be a problem and so the japanese thought that a slim engine was a good solution for this moreover they correctly identified the requirement of generating quite a lot of power as essential for a sixth generation aircraft so on the x2 technology demonstrator flew the xf5 engine developed by hihi corporation it was the predecessor of the xf9 engine and it was the first engine implementing this slim technology Taking the General Electric F1110, which is used on the F2 as a reference, the XF9 has 30% more thrust per unit of cross-sectional area. This means that everything else equal, its diameter can be about 50% smaller. This performance was obtained with a very careful design of the internal aerodynamics and with the use of some rather sophisticated materials the xf9 engine is already ready there are prototypes already built and functioning despite there is no aircraft the engine has a diameter of less than a meter while for example the equivalent american engines of the f-22 or the f-35 are at least 15 20 centimeters larger it is a dual spool low bypass turbofan with a turbine entry temperature of about 1800 degrees like many modern designs but what is not like many modern common aircraft engine designs is the use of ceramic materials in the positions where the engine normally transmits heat to the structure normally aircraft use steel or titanium in the areas that have to withstand the engine heat and obviously they are quite heavy apparently the use of this ceramic isolation is going to further reduce the overall structural weight of the aircraft the engine prototypes have been accredited with the respectable thrust of 107 kilonewton dry and 147 kilonewton with afterburner however the japanese are going into a further development iteration and they are aiming for 196 kilonewton with afterburner however the electrical power generation unit seems to be working already and it is designed to provide up to 180 kilowatts with two engines the total power available on the mitsubishi fx will be 360 kilowatts for comparison is more than twice the power on the f-35 or the f-22 such a large power availability definitely makes direct energy weapons more credible but there is another feature that is definitely unexpected the engine has a 306 degrees 
truss vectoring nozzle with a max jet deviation of 20 degrees. This is definitely going against the grain of almost everyone in the West. But the Japanese believe that truss vectoring will be a defining feature of their aircraft. However, it is interesting to notice that all the other sixth generation projects went into the direction of the variable cycle engines. The Japanese have prioritized different directions of development. Considering that the main impact that these variable cycle engines are going to have is to greatly improve the cruising efficiency of the aircraft while not sacrificing the performance in terms of overall thrust and combat operations, we may think that the FX won't enjoy the same long ranges that maybe other sixth generation aircraft are going to have. In any case, there is a good probability that the Mitsubishi FX is going to be the first sixth generation aircraft to enter active service. But in the meanwhile, if you want to learn more about the fifth generation, we have plenty of videos about it and they're going to appear beside me. Thank you very, very much for watching and see you there.